Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out This Day in Baseball, and enjoy the game. Three hundred and eighty six feet to straightaway left and straightaway right field and four hundred and fourteen feet to center field here at Bush Memorial Stadium. And I guess Pee Wee it's what the ball players would refer to as an honest ballpark. It certainly is. There's nothing cheap about a home run in this ballpark. Of course, Fenway they have the real short left field. But when you hit a home run in this park, you deserve it. And the wind is blowing out a little bit. Today, I think uh, the ball to left field, Eddie Bertu, the shortstop, has played here at the Cardinals and also played with Boston, said that the ball carries better to left field and left center than it does to right field. And I was standing down there watching batting practice, and they were jumping out there pretty good in left field today. And now let's go to the starting lineups, which are basically the same. For Boston, Jose Tartable will lead off playing in right field. Dalton Jones will bat second and play third. Carl Yastrzemski is in left. George Scott will be in the fourth position in the batting order at first base. Reggie Smith is the center fielder batting fifth at his first World Series home run yesterday. Jerry Adair will play second. Batting seventh and playing shortstop is Rico Petroselli. The catcher, the veteran, Elston Howard. And on the mound, Jose Santiago. Santiago started the series opener in Boston, losing 2-1 to one to Gibson. He worked seven innings, allowed two runs, ten hits, walked three, and struck out five, and accounted for the only Boston run in the game with a third-inning home run on an 0-2 count. He had one home run during the regular season. This is his second year with Boston. He has a record over those two years of 24 and 17. Jose is six foot two, 190 pounds, 27 years old, from Puerto Rico. Now for St. Louis. Lou Brock leads off playing in left field. And he has been one of the key men in this series so far. Kurt Flood is in center field, batting second. Roger Maris in right field will bat third. Orlando Cepeda, who came up with a big hit here yesterday, his first hit in the World Series, will be at first base. Tim McCarver is working in back of the plate. Mike Shannon will be at third. Julian Javier is at second. Dal Maxville at shortstop, and Bob Gibson is on the mound. Right now, down below, for this tremendous crowd, which will be in the vicinity of 54,000 people, the Red Sox starting lineup is being introduced. Now, we told you about Santiago, so we move over now to Bob Gibson. He is 3-1 and one in World Series competition. And only one St. Louis Cardinal pitcher has ever won four series games. Harry Brickeen. Brickeen was 0-1 in 1943, 1-0 in 44, and 3-0 against Boston in 1946. Gibson has pitched three consecutive complete game victories in the series after losing his first series game in 1964 to the Yankees here in St. Louis, working eight innings. I think it's significant to point out his strikeout total in series competition. 
he has fanned 41 batters in his 36 series innings with his strikeout totals per game at 9, 13, 9, and 10. His 31 strikeouts in the 1964 series set a record. So with more pregame color in just a moment. At first base, from the American League, Ed Runge. At second base, from the National League, Paul Fryer. At third base, John Stevens of the American League. Down the right field line, Frank Umont of the American League. And down the left field line, Al Barlick of the National League. The umpires have deployed to their positions. The conference is at home plate over. And of course, the managers are very familiar with the ground rules, which are really relatively simple here. Gibson has completed his warm-up throws, has gone back into the St. Louis dugout, and right now Santiago is on his way in from left field where he has been uh, warming up with Red Sox catcher Russ Gibson. A wonderful crowd on hand here today for the fourth game. Jose Cartable, who will lead off for Boston, has just come out of the dugout into the on-deck circle, although the St. Louis Cardinals have not yet taken the field as Frankie Frisch, the Fordham Flash and one of the great ones for the St. Louis Cardinals years ago, a member of baseball's Hall of Fame, has just now, or is in the process right now, of throwing out the first ball for today's game. He's on the mound, taking his warm-up throws with his catcher, Tim McCarver. Orlando Cepeda's at first base. Julian Javier at second. Dal Maxville at shortstop and Mike Shannon at third. In left field is Lou Brock. In center, Kurt Flood. The right fielder is Roger Maris. McCarver throws the ball down to second. The infielders pepper it around. Third baseman Shannon turns it over to Gibson. And the big, strong right-hander is ready to go to work. And we're set for the first pitch of game four in the 1967 series. Here is Pee Wee Reese. Okay, Ken, thank you very much. Big Bob Gibson on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals. They're trying to make it. Three to one in favor of the Cardinals game-wise here today. Tartable takes the first pitch. It's ball one. That pitch is in there for call strike one. Bob Gibson has a real good fastball. Good curveball. He can overpower you, as everyone knows in baseball. Here's the pitch. Tartable tries to hit the ball in the left field. Line drive foul down the third baseline. Gibson, as Ken told you, has won three games in the series play. There's only one other fellow that's done that. That's Harry Bettine. Cartable hits a line ball, shot down to Sapiti, picks it up and puts it over to Bob Gibson coming first, but one away. That ball was hit hard. Sapiti down on one knee. He fumbles the ball, picks it up, goes over to Bob Gibson, and one away. And that brings up Dawson Jones. Gibson doesn't take too much time. He's looking down to Tim McCarver. Here's the pitch. A curveball. A little high and outside. Ball one. Pee Wee Dalton had three hits here yesterday, and he says he was just trying to hit that ball back up the middle until he gets a better feel of these pitchers. Gibson's fastball is in there. Call strike one. One ball and one strike. Well, Ken, I haven't seen Dalton Jones too much. But what I've seen of him, I like this young fellow with that bat in his hand. Very smooth. Bob Gibson has the ball hit hard down the right field line. It's foul. Way back up in the stand. Jones looks like he's not swinging too hard. He just tries to hit the ball. Worst pitch, he'll hit it to left field. Back through the middle. If it's inside, he'll pull it. Bob Gibson shakes his head. He's ready. Here's the pitch. That ball, jamming with it, gets it up with the ball. Flips the ball over to Cepeda. It's two up and two down here. At Bush Stadium, St. Louis. Gibson, who 
was a very good fielder out there on the mound. It's hard to get a ball by. To fun on him, it had better be perfect. Well, this brings up the great left fielder for Carl, by the name of Carl Yosemite. He holds his bat high. Gets in first pitch there, a curveball. Inside for ball one. Gibson completely shackled Yosemite in the first game. Then he came back in the second game, got two home runs. They shut him out yet. Let's see what he does today. A curveball. In there for call strike one. One ball and one strike. It's two away. We're in the first inning here at Bush Stadium. Ken Coleman and I'm Pee Wee Reese bringing you on today's game. Another curveball. Makes it out into right field. Roger Myers over to cut that ball off. Down on one knee. The throw into Dow Maxwell, the shortstop, puffing back in the first base. Yes, empty. So that's his first base hit off Bob Gibson. And it brings up George Peter Scott, the big first baseman. George Scott lives down in Greenville, Mississippi. He's 23 years old. Another one of the fine young ball players. That's the Red Sox have a back ball now. Dandy in there for call strike one. Two away. Call your 50 on his first base. Bob Gibson, as I told you, does not take much time. McCarver giving the sign. Gibson set, looks over at Yosemite. Here's the pitch. Back ball in there for call strike two. Just got that outside corner. Gibson really moves that ball around. He's in and out, up and down. Was one of the few men who could solve Gibson the other day. He was two out of three against Bob as Bob struck out ten at Fenway Park. Two strikes on George Scott. He struck him out. And that's all for George Scott. And that's all for the Red Sox here in the top half of the first inning. There's a score here at Bush Stadium. The Red Sox nothing. And the Cardinals coming to bat. Has really done a job, and especially against Santiago in game one. And I'm speaking of the great left fielder of the Cardinals, Lou Brock, who is six for 12 in this World Series. Jose could not keep him off the bases in game one, so he's got to uh, face that challenge here today. Yes, sir, to control these Cardinals, it's a pretty good idea to keep Brock off of those tracks. San Diego into his windup. Here's the pitch. Brock taking all the way. It's low. Ball one. Six for 12. A cool 500. That ain't bad. San Diego on his warm-up. Here's the pitch. Brock looks like he wanted to bunt one. Took it. It's in there for call strike one. When the bottom half of the first inning here at Bush City. No score in this ball game. The Red Sox have one hit. And that was by Carl Yosemite, coaching at first base for the Cardinals, Dick Sizzler. At third base, Joe Schultz. Brock holds that bat straight up in the air. San Diego pitch. That ball is tapped down to third. Dalton Jones is a fair ball. The long throw. They didn't get it. Terrific speed, San Diego just threw over there, and I imagine what 
watch him rather closely. The fans are hollering, go, 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 and don't be surprised if he doesn't. He didn't on that pitch, right down in there for call strike one. I imagine Kurt Flood taking the first two pitches. He's giving Brock the chance to run if he wants to. Flood checking with his third base coach, Joe Shaw. This Brock is an exciting ball player. He loves the run. He stole 52 bases during the regular season. San Diego watching close. But here comes the pitch. It's a fastball. It's a little low. Gets away from Elson Howard. And Elson looks like he was a little anxious to grab that ball, thinking that Brock may go. And Howard knows he has to grab that ball in a hurry and get rid of it. We're in the bottom half of the first inning. No score. The Red Sox fail to score in the top half of it. The Cardinals are at bat here now with the runner, runner on his first base. The throw to first base. Back easily, Lou Brock. Two balls, one strike on Kirk Flood. Waving that bat around. Let's watch. San Diego. Looks over the here's the pitch. The base hit out of the left field. Yusefsky up the ball, and Flood will not try to go to third as... Yusefsky gets that ball back in a hurry, but he does move down to second. Brock does, and Kurt Flood is on his first. So San Diego, who got into a lot of trouble up at Fenway Park in the first game, is getting himself in a jam here, Ken. I should say, as the first two Cardinals are on, Brock with the infield hit, and Flood with a ringing line singled into left field. Brings to the plate Roger Maris, who drove in the two runs for the Cardinals in that first game 2 1 victory. Roger Maris, who said this is as happy as he's ever been playing with this Cardinals, it's going into pro ball. The first pitch he's taking all the way of curveball in there by Santiago. Strike one. Brock down at second. Flood at first. And I don't believe you could find two faster men in baseball. And are out there right now. San Diego checks Brock back at second. Looks again. Here's the pitch. Roger Myers gets the base hit out in the left field. Here comes Brock in the score. You're thirsty over to cut the ball off. Flood's going to score. Down he's first. Coming in the home. The throw into third base. And Myers is in the second with a double. Mike Shannon, who hit a home run yesterday. 
McCarver back Saturday. Look down at his coach, Joe Schultz, at third base. Maris on at third. McCarver crouched over that player. Here comes the pitch. A bad ball. Base hit out into right field. Roger Maris stepping on home plate for the third run. McCarver making the turn at first base and back in there. And that is the fourth hit for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the first inning. Three runs on four hits. Well, let's see what happens. Brock got a base hit to start this bottom half of the first inning off. Flood then got a base hit. Holding on a second. Maris got a double out into left field, scoring both Brock and Flood. The first pitch to Mike Shen is a curveball. Low and outside. Cepeda hit a fly ball in the right field. Maris tagging up, going to third. Then McCarver gets a single in the right, scoring Maris. And that brings up Mike Shannon. One ball and no strikes on him. It. It's still one away. The pitch to ten and swung on the miss. Strike one. In the series, Shannon has four hits. One up in the home run. Yes, it is. San Diego looking down at his catcher, Elson Hire, waiting for the sign. Here is the pitch. Her ball swung on the miss. up in the bullpen for the Red Sox. Again, those three runs with Gibson pitching is going to be a little tough. Yes, indeed. It's going to have to be a catch-up type of ball game from the Boston point of view. Cannon Smith throws his bat at a curveball. The shortstop, Petroselli in foul territory, comes up with it. Little lazy looper out over third. And holding on at first base, Tim McCarver. And you just mentioned a good point there, Ken. The Red Sox had to play catch-up ball yesterday. And that's a tough game to play. It looks to me like they're going to have to play it again today. Well, during the season, when they had a 10-game winning streak, they had a similar situation to what the Cards have here today. They kept jumping out into quick leads. Now the Cardinals have that advantage in this one. Javier is the hitter. San Diego's first pitch on the ground ball out to shortstop. Back to go backhand. He's got the ball. Everybody save. That ball was hit hard into the hole. Petroselli had to go over about seven steps. He got to the ball. Had to cross over with his glove. Knocks the ball down, but McCarver beats the throw to second base, so Javier gets the base hit, and that's the fifth hit. In this ball game, runners at first and second. Down Mack for the hit, a curveball, low and outside, ball one. Javier, the only player to have five hits. the only player to have five hits because Lou Brock has six hits and seven now starting in the day's game Dal Maxwell takes that pitch inside ball two San Diego may be a little careful little short stop here Bob Gibson's the next hitter the ninth place hitter but he's not a bad hitter himself runners on first and second San Diego Look at the hard. There's the ball. It's a base hit out in the left field. You think he may make it close. Here comes the throw. Elton Howard out in front. And he beats the throw. The Carver does. Javier is 
the only Cardinal to hit in every game because Lombard only gave up one hit in that second game. And Javier had it. The Cardinal has really come on strong here in this bottom half of the first inning. With a count, two balls and no strikes. one out in the left field and Yastrzemski as we've talked so much about how he charges those ground balls and the great arm that he has I thought he may have a good shot at McCarver coming in the home but McCarver beats the throw and Sal Magley the Red Sox pitching coach has gone to the mound and they're going to make a change now as right hander Gary Bell who was the starting pitcher here yesterday will come on to do the pitching for Boston Yesterday's game, Gary worked two innings and he allowed three runs and five hits, one of them a home run. He struck out one. And Jose Santiago in this first inning has pitched to eight men. Six of them have had base hits. Four of them have scored. So he worked after working just two-thirds of an inning, he will leave, allowing six hits and four runs, no walks and no strikeouts. Bell has just finished a long walk-in from the bullpen and is talking now with Sal Magley and with Elston Howard. On the base hit, Maxville went down to second on the throw, so the Cardinals have runners at second and third and nobody out, or two out rather, here in this first inning as Bell now is starting his warm-up throw. Coleman with Pee Wee Reese at Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis with two men out in the last half of the first inning. In St. Louis, they had 4 nothing. Gary Bell, who has given to Bob Gibson with runners at second and third. And once again, here is Pee Wee Reese. Okay, Ken. At Bob Gibson, as we've said so many times, is not a bad hitting pitcher. Gary Bell. Looking down at Elson Howard, and Elson Howard shaking that fist, like then, come on, we're still here. The first pitch, fastball low and inside. Bell started the game yesterday. He pitched two innings. He was a losing pitcher. He gave up three runs on five hits. Struck out one and did not walk anyone. The count right now on Gibson. One ball, no strike. Bell taking a little time. Elson Howard. They seem they can't get together on the side. Here's the wind up the pitch. A bat ball in there for call strike one. We're in the bottom half of the first inning. The Red Sox failed to score. The Cardinals have four runs. They're still not out of the inning. Two away. Runners on first and second. Javier on his third. Maxwell on his second. Here's the pitch. Silly the shortstop. Going back, he calls for it. He simply calls for it and takes it for out number three. So here at first day in the bottom half of the first inning, the Cardinals score. The Red Sox, nothing. A cloudy, cool afternoon with a temperature now about 55 degrees. Here's Pee Wee. Bob Gibson, first pitch to Reggie Smith. Low and outside, ball one. Smith wants to take a look at the ball. Down at Hilly. This cross is out. Gives him a new one. One ball, no strikes on Reggie Smith. Leading things off for the Red Sox in the top half of the second inning. That pitch is outside, ball two. Gibson. When he releases that ball, he puts everything into it. Falls over toward first base a little bit. Here comes the windup. The pitch to Smith. Gibson. 
Rounder out to Javier at second base. Up with the ball. Flips the ball over to Cepeda. It's all for Reggie Smith. Gibson will be tough today. Bob Gibson. Not a little fellow. He's not a real big fellow. He's six feet, one and a half inches tall. But he's well put together. 195 pounds. Quite a basketball player. Jerry Adair, first pitch to him. Foul off the right, back up at the stand. Strike one. Gee, we, there's a note on the scoreboard out here indicating that Luke Rock's four hits in the opening game made him the sixth Cardinal to do it. Others, Joe Medwick, Rip Collins, Zeno Slaughter, Whitey Karowski, and Joe Garagiola. How did Joe Garagiola get it? <laughs> Underneath it, Patsy's glove, takes it for out number one. 
as we've said so many times during this series. You have to keep that drop off of those bases. Once he gets on, everything starts to happen. He upsets the pitchers, infielders, catchers. He really moves. Kurt Flood is ahead of his one away. Gary Bell, first pitch to him. He butts one, or tries to butt one, fouls it straight back. Flood thought he'd caught Dalton Jones back a little bit at the third base. One strike on him. Defensively for the Red Sox in the infield. Shot at first base. Second base, Jerry Adair at shortstop. Petro Selle. Third base, Dalton Jones. One strike on Kurt Flood. Gary Bell in the windup. Here's the pitch. It's high and inside. One ball and one strike. Kurt Flood, a real good second place hitter. He can really handle that bat. Not only can he move the ball around, he hits over 330 during the season. The fastball inside, ball two. The Cardinals have four runs on six hits. Red Sox, no runs on one hit. The temperature here at Bush City, about 54 degrees. It's an overcast day. Rather chilly. Here's the pitch. Flood popped it up. George Scott, the first baseman, underneath it and takes it for out number two. So Gary Bell. Finding things a little bit easier than Santiago did, who started this game. Santiago pitched two-thirds of an inning. Gave up four runs on six hits. Roger Maris, who's had a good series, the batter, he doubled in the first inning, driving in two runs. There's a fastball with that side the gas. Remember, fans, Ken Coleman and I will be right back here again tomorrow to bring you the fifth game of this World Series. Hope you can be with us. Bell pitched the mass, curveball in there for call strike one. Maris now has four for 12. Five runs batted in. Maris, a big left-handed hitter. Gary Bell's pitch to him. A right up pitch is high and outside. Ball two. You try to keep the ball away from Maris. Get it inside. He can pull it out of here. Out of any ballpark. He keeps moving that back. Now he's set. Gary Bell's pitch to him. Back ball. Damn him a little bit. Dick Smith with the coach at first base. Gets a nice hand as he comes up to the ball. Two balls, two strikes. On Roger Maris. Can I believe Bell looks a little bit better today than he did yesterday? Yes, he does. And uh, oddly enough, our second pitcher yesterday was Lucy was the best one. It seems to be a matter of timing involved here. Second in a row pitcher. <laughs> To the ground, as George Scott, he'll take it himself. He walks over and steps on the bag, and that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the second inning. The score here, Bush City and the Cardinals four and the Red Sox nothing. But the Red Sox, Elson Howard, the first pitch to him. He takes it in there for call strike one. Well, as we mentioned, the Red Sox now have to play catch-up, and with Gary Bell do next, Joe Foy is on the deck. Elson Howard pops one up, the paid in foul territory down at the first baseline, takes it for out number one. Joe Foy. Pinch hitting on the pitcher, Gary Bell. Gibson, first pitch joint. Curveball in there for call strike one. That's what happened, as Ken and I have said. Here's the pitch to Joe Foy. Swung on a miss, strike two. When you're playing catch-up baseball, even though Gary Bell has looked real sharp, you got to use that pinch hitter. Try to get back in this game as the Red Sox trail four to nothing. The 0-2 pitch to Foy. 
And it didn't take long for Gibson to get rid of Boy. A real good fastball. He swung on and missed it. For out number two. I don't believe Ken I've ever seen a pitcher work this fast as Bob Gibson does. He really works fast uh, both ways. <laughs> Jerry 
Davis. His car, the ball club, can move on those base backs. Of course, they've had a lot of opportunities today. They've had a lot of men on. The Red Sox have not had a chance. They have a good fast ball club. The infield has grown in with a count of two balls and two strikes on McCarver. No one out. Here is the pitch to McCarver with the pitted third. Is a high fly going out to center field. Reggie Stiff, who has a good arm, he's underneath the ball. Here comes the throw, but they should not be able to get McCarver. The throw is off to the right. Elson Howard up with the ball. He throws the bag, the ball to Jones. At third, I thought that maybe going over to tag third on the appeal play, but McCarver had plenty of time. There was no use rushing. Down at third, so that ball was pretty deep. Out to Reggie Smith. Mike Shannon's now the hitter. It's one away. The Cardinals now lead five to nothing. One and oh is the count on Mike Shannon. Shannon played right field in the 1964 World Series. Fastball. Dalton Jones 
Jones out into left field. And Mike Shannon scored all the way from first base. As you said, he could not tap that ball out in left field. It could have a funny bounce out there. And the time he got to it, Mike Shannon scored easily. So we have Javier down at second. Just one away. The score, Cardinal six. The Red Sox nothing. Now Maxwell, the batter. In there for tall strike one. Javier now has six for 12. Maxwell got a base at his last time up. Bottom half the third inning. Jerry Stevenson pitched to Maxwell. Curveball. Moved a little bit. Strike two. And now Pee Wee down in the Boston bullpen, Dave Moorhead, has started loosening up. We've seen three pitches for the Red Sox, and now a fourth is warming up. Two strikes on Maxwell, a little grounder out to shortstop. Petroselli up with the ball over to George Scott to retire Maxwell. Moving over to third is Javier. But we must say, one of the pitches looks real sharp. That was Jerry Bell. Bob Gibson's a hitter with two away. Runner at third. Javier. Here's the pitch by Jerry Stevenson. Foul straight back, strike one. The Cardinals scored four big runs in the first inning. And they have scored two in the bottom half of the third inning for their six runs. They have six runs on eight hits. That much made an error. And the Red Sox, no runs on one hit. They have not made an error. Look out, Bob. Curveball. Over the top of Bob Gibson. Here's the fan kind of say something about it. But I don't believe that meant anything. One ball and one strike on Bob. It's two away. Stevenson shakes his head, says he's ready. Here's the pitch. It popped up out into center field. Reggie Smith underneath it. And takes it and has it for the last out. So that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the third inning. They came up with two runs. So the score after three full innings, but it was in there for call strike one. Pitcher Bob Gibson. One strike on Dalton Jones. The wind up, the pitch, a foul, straight back, and the count is two strikes. Last year in the World Series, if you remember correctly, Baltimore Orioles and the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Orioles won it in four straight. That ball, inside, ball one. One ball and two strikes. win it this year. They lead two games to one. A third ball. Dalton Jones just got a piece of it. Kept him alive. One ball and two strikes. A real good looking left handed hitter right here, Dalton Jones. Hard man to strike out. Here's a man that does it quite often. Bob Gibson. Right down into his foot. Gibson picks the ball up. Donatelli wants to take a look at it. That one had to hurt, Pee Wee. Uh, usually, if it hits the fellow's foot in the box, it stays there. But the way Gibson falls with that velocity and the way Jones cuts to the ball, that one almost out to the mound. I can hear the players on the bench now barking like a dog over there. <laughs> Two strikes on Dalton Jones. Ball hit hard. Foul down at first baseline. And the count remains one ball and two strikes. Out of some of you fans tuning in a little bit late, the Cardinals got off their running start in the first inning. They came up with four big runs. Two more in the third. They lead this ball game six to nothing. We're in the top half of the fourth inning. Dalton Jones pops it up out into short left field. Lou Brock comes in, calls for it, and takes it. Boy, out number one. So it's one 
halfway, and it brings up Carl Yusinski. He's one for one today. Usually they say as Yusinski goes, they'll go to that side. Gibson looking down at McCarver. Here's the pitch to Carl. That ball, it's outside, ball one. Here's a fellow that swings hard on every pitch. He really comes through. Gibson caught him almost not ready there. You have to keep watching this man. As he gets set and brings it ball in a hurry. Two, one ball and one strike on Carl Yusinski here. And the top half of the fourth inning went away. He had two home runs in that second game up at Fenway Park. There's a fastball. Keep the ball away from Yusinski. But Gibson does move it around. Yusinski with that full stance. Here is the pitch. That ball high and outside, ball two. Yusinski in the last two games of the season. He had seven hits. And eight times it's bad against the Minnesota Twins. Here's the fifth to two and two pitch. The fastball outside. He fouls it off the left. He had 27 home runs at Fenway Park this year. He had 44 altogether, 17 on the road. Two balls, two strikes. Bob Gibson. Here's the pitch. Little tap right back to Gibson. No trouble with it. Tips the ball over Cepeda. Gibson hustling down that first baseline. Gibson and a couple of infielders started in like it was three outs. As they say, we're playing the old rule. Three outs, good in it. George Scott. Let's see what he's done today. George Scott routed out for second base and swings on the first pitch and fouls his back. Strike one. George Scott struck out in the first turn. Third ball. In there for call strike two. Let's see how Gibson works on Scott with two strikes. No balls on him right now. Here's the wind up. He sat on Turbo way outside. That's the first bat on this. I've seen him throw all day. Count is one ball and two strikes. Dark Scott pumping that bat. Here is the pitch. He struck him out. <laughs> Donatelli said the ball hit in the dirt. McCarvin starts over the dugout. Donatelli said come back here. Didn't catch this ball in the fly. Just gets a piece of it, keeps him alive. One ball and two strikes. Bob Gibson into the lineup. The pitch, third ball, ground ball, shortstop. Highly shortstop out in the left field. Rock up with the ball. He fumbles the ball momentarily. Scott makes the big turn back in there, though. So Scott, after striking out, gets himself a base and he's one for two today. Grounded out to the second base in his first time up. Amazing thing to me about Bob Gibson is his control. He went into the ninth inning in the first game before he walked anybody. And that game was two outs, as I recall, and today he hasn't come close to walking anybody again. Unusual for such a hard thrower. That ball inside, ball one. That's true, Ken. You'd think as much effort as this fellow puts into the ball. As he throws it, he'd be a little bit wilder. Rio took control. One ball, no strike. If Tempsky takes the pitch, it's too low. Ball two. Of course, we have a fellow over here on our right. That's too pretty hard. Kofax, that I guess that is about as good as control as any pitcher ever had. Yes, indeed. But I saw him when he first started out, too. He was a little bit wild. 
worked hard. He became a control pitcher. One of the best. Yastrzemski. The 2-0 count to Reggie Smith. Hits the ball to Zepeda at first base. Goes over steps on the bag, and that's all for Reggie Smith. And that's all for the Red Sox here. The top half of the fourth inning. So after three and a half innings of play, it's still the Cardinals six and the Red Sox nothing. Pee Wee Race. Okay, kid. On the bottom half of the fourth inning, Lou Brock. The first pitch there, Paul hit hard on the right center. That's going to be in there for extra bases. You'll have to hurry to get this one back in. Reggie Smith. He's holding the ball up in the air, and the umpire is saying that the fan touched the ball. So it's an automatic ground rule double. It would have been an easy triple, Pee Wee, and maybe even more than that. He might have even had a shot at an inside the park home run. But a fan out there reached down and touched the ball. The ground rule states if that happens, it's a two-base hit. So Lou Brock, who is all the way to third base and might have challenged by trying for an inside the park home run, goes back to second. Took a real high hop. That fence is how high, Ken? Ten and a half feet high. Because we don't know how tall the fan was who reached down to touch. <laughs> don't know how long his arms were. <laughs> but he touched and we could see it. And of course, the umpire was right out there on top of it. And he saw it. Reggie Smith didn't even try to throw the ball. He just held the ball up in the air. Jerry Stevenson picked the first flag. Like he wanted to push that ball, punch the ball out of first base on. He took it to the top side ball one. First flood. He's one for two. Got a thing on that big first inning. Lou Brock down at second base. Let's see if Flood tries to hit that ball to right field. After watch Brock, he started to go. That's the silly to shortstop. In back of him out there. Jerry Stevenson stepped off the rubber. Elson Howard out to talk to Jerry Stevenson. Brock is now 8 for 15 in this series. And, of course, when he gets on base, he unsettles the pitcher and the catcher. When he gets on second, he can up through the whole infield because the second baseman and the shortstop are constantly on the move, trying to keep him as close to the bag as possible. And Adair and Petroselli have both been weaving in behind him. He just takes a couple of steps away from those infielders. First foot, he hits the ball to right field on the ground. Jerry Adair up within second base, puts the ball over to George Scott, and he got the job done. He got Lou Brock over to third. So it's one away, a fly ball. Well, now score, Brock from third, and it's Whitten from second. And it's remarkable, Ken, that a fellow hitting in that second spot to hit 3.30 and getting himself up on a play just like that. Yes, uh, certainly is a tribute to the team play of Kurt Flood. Roger Maris, lines one. Foul down at first baseline. He's one for two. Got a double. His first time up, driving in two runs. That's always said that it was a team effort. But I think in the case of the Cardinals here, it's really true. Boys can really communicate with each other. What's that second break, second base combination? Javier and Maxwell. Here comes Roger Maris. Takes the pitch inside. Ball one, one ball and one strike. Jerry Stevenson curves him. Talking about double play combination. Boston Red Sox have a dandy. And Texas Shelley is short and Jerry is there. A young fellow named Mike Andrews who played a lot of second base for the Red Sox. Very good. Jerry Stevenson picks to Roger Mayer. One on. Strike two. One ball, two strikes on Roger Mayer. The infield is in. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And the Cardinals lead in this game by a score of six to nothing. Here's the pitch by Jerry. Fastball high and inside. Ball two. Stevenson is not taking. 
Yankees line up. He's watching Brock at third. He comes set, looks over at Brock. Here's the pitch. Curveball inside. Elson Howard makes a nice save. Makes the count three and two. The next hitter, Orlando Cepeda. He got a double his last time up. Three and two is the count on Rogers. The Cardinals have nine hits. The Red Sox have two. Jerry Stevenson taking a little time. He checks Brock over third. There's a tapper. Good shot. Looks Brock back. He runs right at Roger Myers. And Myers is going right back to home. But Scott begs him. There's a high hopper to George Scott at first base. He wanted to make sure that Brock didn't come in. He's watching him all the way. And Myers came right back to home and Scott back. Scott has great instinct at first base, and very often during the year with men at men third, uh, he would make that play even from a distance. That time, of course, Brock was not going, and he had a chance to run in and get Roger Maris, who, as you said, Pee Wee, was retreating toward home plate. Now, Cepeda. Cepeda. Hit a double to the left, his last time up. Jerry Stevenson takes a little bit too much time. Cepeda steps out of there. He'll move Brock down at third base. It's two away. Jerry Stevenson watching Brock. He's in his lineup this time. Curveball, low and outside, ball one. Brock at 52 stolen bases on the year. He stole two of the first game. Up at Boston. Stevenson. Hit out to Dalton Jones by Cepeda. Over to George Scott, and that's all for Cepeda, and that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. So after four innings of play, it's the Silver Cardinals six and the Red Sox nothing. Here's a fellow that's never played in the World Series, but has been a pro for a number of years. And a lot of now, he's been a pleasure working with him. Come on in. Kenny, Kenny Coleman. Thank you very much, Pee Wee. Jerry Adair, ready to uh, lead off in the fifth inning, and the first pitch from Gibson is taken low for ball one. Adair in the second inning was called out on strikes. He'll be followed by Pepper Sully, and then Howard is to up third. The outfield playing a step toward right. Gibson into the windup, and the veteran right-handed throws. The pitch is foul back, and the count is one ball and one strike. Adair hit 292 in his 89 games with Boston this year. Jumped out with four runs in the first and got two in the third. They lead six to nothing. The pitch is one on a miss. One ball, two strikes. Gibson has struck out four and has not walked anybody. Has given up singles to Yastrzemski and Scott. He has been in charge. The right-hander fires. Ground ball hit down to third near the line. Shannon up with it. Throws to Cepeda for the out. Adair is out. It is 
remember. Ken Moorhead has a real good overhand curveball, doesn't he? Yes, he does, Pee Wee. Uh, of course, last year on the 19th of April in the Patriots Day doubleheader in Boston, he hurt his arm. Had to go out to the minor. But Dave, in his major league career, had a no-hit game once and had to fight his way back from obscurity this year after starting the season with Toronto and has been back with the Boston Ball Club from about halfway on through this season. McCarver leads off, and the pitch is an overhand fastball at the belt on the inside corner for a strike call. When Moorhead is firing, he can throw a very, very hard. McCarver, a left-handed batter, backs off for a moment. Tim has singled the right field, scored the fourth cardinal run in the first inning, had a sacrifice fly in the third to drive in their fifth run. They're leading 6-0. Pitch is a and Javier will be batting third. This is the last half of the fifth inning. Cardinals got four in the first and two in the third. Moorhead throws. That ball outside. The count is one and two. In the first, Brock let off with an infield hit. Flood single to left. Maris hit a two-run double. McCarver banged a single to score Maris. And... Maxfield drove home McCarver for the fourth run. There's a ground foul off the first base side. Still one and two on McCarver. The outfield plays the St. Louis catcher toward right. Mike Ryan working back of the plate. Pitch. Big curve outside. Two and two. The plate umpire, Augie Donatelli of the National League at first base, Ed Rungy of the American League at second, Paul Fire of the National League, John Stevens of the American League at third. Moorhead delivers, but Tyler fouls it back out of play. I'm firing down the right field line, Frank Umont of the American League, down the left field line, Al Pollock of the National League. The Cardinals with a two edge in the World Series and leading here six to nothing. The pitch one on a miss strike three as Moorhead came in with high smoke to get McCarver and that is the first strikeout by Boston pitching today and Moorhead is the fourth early. Santiago went two thirds of an inning allowed six hits and four runs. Gary Bell went one and a third allowed no hits no runs. Gary Stevenson went two innings, allowed three hits, two runs. The batter is Shannon. The pitch to him is one on a miss, strike one. Right-handed hitting third baseman has fouled to Petroselli and won. It's a curveball on the ground to second. Easy hop for Adair. Throws the spot for the out. Two out in the fifth. St. Louis leading Boston by a score of six to nothing as Julian Javier steps to the plate. Batting order. Young fella from Haverhill, Massachusetts. Pitch 
to Mike is taking low ball one. Brian will be followed by Tarnabo and Jones as Moorhead took over Elston Howard's spot. Bob Gibson into the windup. The pitch, one on a miss. One ball and one strike. Brian is a very fine defensive catcher for Boston. Pitch is foul back this way.
Pitch and ready. One, two, pitch. Yusemski takes it low and inside. Two and two. Two men out. Trotable on first base in the Boston six. St. Louis with a six to nothing lead. The pitch to Yusemski. Hit on the ground up the middle. Back to the uh, second goes the shortstop. Maxfield throws to Cepeda for the out. Retiring the side. Good play by Dal Maxfield. Back of the bag at second. No runs. One hit. One left on. And so after five and one half, St. Louis leads six to nothing. The card. Dave Moorhead throws to him. The pitch is inside ball one. Maxfield has singled the left and grounded out the shortstop. Right-handed batter. Moorhead throws. Ground ball hit down to Jones at third, right at the bag. Throws the stop for the out. One away. Six nothing St. Louis. We're in the last half of the sixth inning. You know, Pee Wee, uh, that overhand curveball. Well, first, let's say that the hand here is for Bob Gibson, who has been brilliant again today. But that overhand curveball of Moorhead, I think when you and I were kids, we used to call that a drop sometimes. And that's a pretty good one, too. Gibson takes the ball outside. This is the first time I've ever had a chance to see Moorhead pitch. He comes right over the top. Pitch to Gibson is a check swing ground ball. Foul past uh, Dick Sizzler in the first base coach's box. One and one to count. Here's a curveball. A little bit like a fellow that I saw last night he used to pitch with the Dodgers. I mean, but Carl Oster, he came out over the top, and it really rolls off. That ball is high, and the count goes to two and one on Bob Gibson. Bob has fly to Yastrzemski in left, and to Smith in center field. Two and one. Moorhead kicks and throws. The pitch is low and away. Three balls, one strike. One man out, nobody on, last of the six. St. Louis got four in the first inning and two in the third. They lead six to nothing. Gibson fouls it back. Three and two. Bob is a great natural athlete. Once played with the Harlem Globetrotters and went to Creighton University in Omaha on a basketball scholarship. No wonder he can feel that position out there on the mound. Moorhead, 3-2 pitch to Gibson. He is outside and low. He lost him. With one out... Cardinals have a base runner. That's the second walk allowed by Boston pitching. The first by Moorhead. One out and one on, and the batter is Drew Brock. Today is two for three. He now has eight hits in the series, more than any other player. Had an infield hit in the first inning and scored the first St. Louis run. Fly to Yastrzemski and left in the second and doubled in the fourth. A ground rule double he might have had would have had certainly three, but the ball was touched by a fan out there in the bleachers in right center. Pitch hit on the ground to Petroselli. Flips over to Adair for one. Back to first. Safe at first base. Brock is, you can well imagine, a very difficult man to double up. And they couldn't uh, pull it off that time. As Gibson is for six to four, Petroselli to Adair and reaches on the field is choice. So there are two men out and a runner at first. Blue Brock has grounded into only 21 double plays in five years in the majors. Here is Flood. The fans want Brock to go. More head set. He's going to pitch. Throw down to second base and he is
It's a set and pitch. Strike called on the outside corner of the knees. The count is one and one. Flood, after getting a solid single to left in the first inning, popped up the spot at first base in the second, grounded the second base in the fourth. The pitch. Flood hits a ground ball to short. Petroselli in and up with it. Throws the first base in time, and they get him. Flood is out, short the first, and in the sixth inning, there were no runs, no hits, and one man is left on. At the end of six, the Cardinals six and the Red Sox nothing. For Boston in the seventh, the Red Sox trail the Cardinals by a score of six to nothing. Trot struck out in the first inning and single to left field in the fourth. Hit the ground ball on one hop to Max Phillips.
the pitch. Check swing pop up. Gibson makes the catch near the foul line off first. Halfway between first and home as he went over like a cat to grab the ball. A nice play by the Cardinal pitcher. And that's all in the seventh for Boston. No run, no hit. And the one man left on. And so after six and one half, St. Louis leads six to nothing. Involving Atlanta and Houston. The one two pitch curve away, two and two. Uh, Braves traded Denny Lamass, a left-handed pitcher, and a shortstop, Dennis Menke, to Houston for Sonny Jackson, a shortstop, and a first baseman named Chuck Passman. That's probably the first trade of the year. Yes, I would think. Two balls, two strikes to count. Moorhead getting the mound for the front of it, six to his liking. One man out in the last of the seven. Cepeda hits a fly ball into left center field. Reggie Smith drifting to his right makes the catch for the out. Two men out in the seven for St. Louis. Cardinals ahead by a score of six to nothing. In a game that's been dominated by Cardinal right-hander Bob Gibson and early foot by the Cardinals at the plate. The batter is the catcher, Tim McCarver. Left-handed hitter has singled the right and scored a run. Hit a sacrifice fly and struck out. Takes a breaking ball over for a strike call. McCarver has driven in a pair of runs also. One in the first and one in the third. Dave Moorhead throws outside for a ball, one and one. Moorhead is from San Diego, California. Handsome right-hander who had quite a story in coming back to the Red Sox this year after having a lame arm most of last season and early this year. Pitches inside, two balls, one strike. Pitches inside for a ball. Yeah, 
Field plays this right-handed batter a bit toward right field. Gibson throws a curve in for a strike call. Two strikes on Mike Ryan. Dave Moorhead went three innings and allowed no runs, no hits. Walked one and struck out two. There's a fly ball into short center field. Flood comes in and makes the catch. He did that twice yesterday and has done it again today. He has a great knack of getting a jump on the ball. Look for a moment like it might drop in, but Flood with an extra burst of speed comes in and makes the catch to retire Ryan. And there are two men out in the Red Sox eighth inning. And the batter is the leadoff man, Jose Tartabol. Gibson throws a fastball high and away, ball one. Tartable has grounded out the first twice and had an infield hit. The pitch, Bob takes a little off, it's ball two. Donatelli of the National League calling the balls and strikes. The pitch is foul back, two and two. Gibson, who a couple of times in the game slowed his pace just a little, now working very fast again and looking just as strong as he did in the early innings. The 2-2 two -two pitch inside, three and two on Tartable. Ed Rungy, the umpire at first, second, John Stevens at third, Frank Umont in right, Al Bonnick in left field. Three and two on Tartable. Gibson throws. There's a line shot through the middle into center field for a base hit. Right past Gibson's head, Bob got his glove up and tried to make a play on it but could not. And Tartable has his second hit in the ball game and the fourth for the Red Sox with two men out in the eighth. Cardinals have a six to nothing lead as Dalton Jones moves in. Left-handed batting third baseman has grounded to the pitcher and twice fly to left field. Gibson throws high for a ball. Three times now, the Red Sox have had singles after two are out in this ball game. Once they had a hit after only one out. So Gibson has really not been in any kind of trouble. Pitch is low for a ball. Nobody has reached second against Gibson. Two balls, no strikes. Pitch is a strike call, two and one. Bob has struck out five. He has walked one. Major League 
the way they say it works most of the time. Ten throws, and this one is low, ball two. Quite an experience for this young fellow to be pitching at the age of 19 in a World Series. Just a year away from high school. Here's the 2 nothing pitch. Shannon fouls it back out of play. Mike today is 0 for 2. He fouled the Petroselli, walked, and grounded out the third. I'll tell you what, though, Pee Wee, I did a dugout interview show with Ken Brett the first day he came up to the majors, and it was the first time he'd ever been on a radio program, and he ate a candy bar all through the show. So he doesn't, uh, well, he's got the cool as people his age say. Pitches outside, ball free. He looks to me like he's throwing pretty free and easy out there. Maybe I'll have to retract that thing. Maybe he is nervous. I said his knee shook a little that first time up. Three balls and one strike to count on Shannon. Javier on deck. Last to the eighth. Brett delivers. Foul ball out of play to right field going into the upper stand. And now it is raining. It has started to rain fairly hard. And down below, fans are scampering toward cover. Three balls, two strikes. The pitch. Shannon pops it up in foul territory off third. Ryan and Jones over. Mike Ryan makes the catch. Shannon fouls to the catcher, Mike Ryan. One out in the eighth inning. So it's been cloudy and cool all day. We've had a threat of rain here for a couple of days, and now we are getting it. The Cardinals lead by a score of six to nothing. Incidentally, Alan Roth, our statistician, tells us there has never been a World Series game that has gone less than nine innings. They've always gotten through all of them. Bobby here at the plate. Pitch to him is swung on a miss, strike one. Julian has a single and a double and has been called out on strikes. One away in the eighth. The pitch, fastball, swung on a miss, strike two. Dave Moorhead pitched brilliantly for Boston today. And Gary Bell in relief, the man who started yesterday, also pitched very well. Brett throws, and he gets him with a breaking pitch around the knees. So he's gotten the first two men here in the eighth, striking out Julian Javier. And with two out and nobody aboard, the batter is Dal Maxfield. St. Louis, six, and Boston, nothing. Six, nine, and all for the Cardinals. Zero, four, and all for Boston. The pitch to Maxfield is low, ball one. Dow has single the bat, grounded to short, bounced out to third. Ken Brett gets the sign from Ryan. Youthful left-hander throws, and it's carved foul off the first base side out of play. One and one. delivers, and this one gets by, ball two and strike one. Cardinals leading six to nothing. Only three times in the history of the World Series has the team been down three games to one and come on to win it all. Pitch is a ball, three and one. It happened in 1903, Boston over Pittsburgh. In 1925, Pittsburgh over Washington. And in 1958, New York over Milwaukee. 3-1 pitch. Low and outside. Maxville gets a walk. With two out of the eighth inning, Brett walks Maxville. And the batter will be Bob Gibson. pitcher getting a very fine hand which is well earned as he pitched another great ball game in the World Series today. He slide to left, slide to center, and walk. Brett throws to him. He swings and misses strike one. Young left-hander of the Red Sox gets the sign for Mayan. Looks toward first. Throws. Gibson takes it high. One ball, one strike. 
and one pitch. Grounded to it, Petroselli off to his right and with it. Over to second for the fourth play, retiring the side. The Cardinals are out of the eighth inning. No runs, no hits. One man is left on at the end of eight. St. Louis, six and Boston, nothing. The short. It's a line drive into right center field. Maris going hard, can't get it. It's to the wall. Yastrzemski going into second base, standing with a double. Kyle Yastrzemski doubles to right field to open the Boston ninth inning. Red Sox trailing six to nothing, and the batter is going to be George Scott. George Scott has struck out, single to left, and grounded out to shortstop. The rain coming down harder now. Bob Gibson ready. The pitch. High fly ball to right field. Maris ready. Makes the catch. Yes, tags up. Is heading for third base. The long throw is not in time. Safe at third. George Scott flies to right field. And after the catch, Kyle Yastrzemski moves to third. A man at third base and one out here in the ninth inning. Cardinals with a six to nothing lead.
anybody can be pitched to, and our game plan has been going pretty good against Carl. And of course, uh, this is all I can say that we have a lot of luck with him so far. Lou, what about your own game plan now? Uh, to get on base, to try and steal a base, and this you've done so well. And what about the ball you hit back in the first inning? Which, if there was a turning point, it was the very first ball. Hit, hit down the third base to Jones. The ball took a little bit of a bad hop, but I don't know if he'd have gotten you anyway. Well, Tony, he was playing rather deep. Uh, I usually play third baseman, and uh, of course, I faked the bunt down at third baseline, and uh, he didn't move in. And of course, I was trying to get him in because the guy, uh, uh, Santiago, had a good sinker ball. And of course, uh, the next pitch was a good sinker ball that hit, uh, hit off the end of my bat, and I was glad he didn't come in. What about the World Series going back to Boston? Do you think you'll end right here tomorrow with Carlton, or do you think you're going back to Boston? Well, I don't know, uh, Tony. We're going to give it all we got. I think there's a lot of people, uh, quite a few guys on a ball club who feel as though they want to end it here, so they're going to be a, a little extra tomorrow, and uh, I hope that we can end it here. Well, you've had yourself a fine series, and of course your speed has told a big story for the Cardinal Ball Club. What about Bob Gibson? He's been just sensational for you, hasn't he, in the two ball games? This is it. Bob is uh, practically unbeatable. Uh, anytime Bob plays three games, we can count on him winning two, and uh, so far he's won two. If he does a third game to be pitched, I think Bob's going to be a good job. He's going to do a good job in that one, Tony. All right, you've got Jim Lombard coming up tomorrow in the ball game versus Steve Carlton, a fine left-hander. What are you personally going to try and do differently against Jim Lombard in tomorrow's ball game? Well, I would try to get on base, uh, Tony. Uh, as you know, the first game Jim pitched, I wasn't able to get on base. I hit the ball shop a few times. But uh, I won't change any game plan. Matter of fact, I don't have any game plan. I just go up there swinging. Lou Brock, thank you so much. Congratulations. Best of luck to you tomorrow. The rest of the series, should there be a 6-7 and seven game, now back to Kirk Kelly. Bob Gibson. Sandy, Sandy Colfax. Tell me something about Bob Gibson and Ken Coleman. Really, uh, I don't think I can tell you anything about him. Uh, you watch him pitch. Uh, you look at the scoreboard, and you, and you know all about him. He doesn't beat himself. I think that's the biggest thing about Bob. He's a, he's a great pitcher. He's got great stuff, but you're going to have to beat him. Uh, he's not going to help. He's not going to walk many hitters. Uh, he's not going to give in to the hitters. He's not going to make too many bad pitches. He's a great fielding pitcher. He does everything that you have to do out there, plus the fact that he's one of the great competitors, I think, in baseball. And, uh, I'd say, you know, no ball game is fun, but the ball games you pitch against a guy like that, if you happen to beat him, you know, you take special pride in a ball game like that, and if he beats you, and you, you can't feel too bad about it. You just hope you're a little above 500 against a guy like that. Well, I would say that's a pretty good description of Bob, uh, Bob Gibson, and I know Sandy has seen him quite a few times, and the one thing that Sandy said, Ken, that really impresses me, this fella really challenges you. He does not walk you, he makes you hit the ball, and I don't, I, I don't think it makes any difference to him, but it'd be Babe Ruth, Carl Yastrzemski, who's up there, he's going to bring that ball in, in that strike zone. That's for sure. Now to review the scoring for anyone who tuned in late, in the first inning of the ball game, Lou Brock led off with an infield single. Chris Flood paused with a single to left field, and with runners at first and second, Roger Maris doubled to left to drive in the first two runs. Cepeda flied to right, and Maris went to third after the catch. McCarver singled to right to score Roger Maris. Dan McCarver went to second base on a single by Julian Javier and scored on a single by Dal Maxville. And they wound up with four runs on six base hits in the first inning. They added two more in the third when Cepeda led off with a double. He went to third on a wild pitch and scored on McCarver's sacrifice fly. Shannon walked, and then Javier banged out a double to send Mike home with a sixth run. And that was it as far as the scoring was concerned as the Cardinals won it six to nothing. Now, from the Boston point of view, their situation is this. They are down three games to one in this World Series and only three times in the history of the Classics has a team been able to come back and overcome that kind of a deficit. It happened in 1903 when Boston defeated Pittsburgh. And that was an eight-game series, by the way. Boston won five games over to three. In 1925, Pittsburgh did it over Washington. In 1958, the New York Yankees did it over Milwaukee. So that is the story on what faces the Red Sox as they tomorrow will send Jim Lonborg against Steve Calvin. We'll give you the complete rundown right after this message. 